Okay, thank you. Uh, next panelist is, is Nadia Ali. I mean, he's a PhD from, from Nanjing University in of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And he, he will present a, a rapid 3D microwave a printing of continuous carbon fiber. So, please. Yeah. Thank you for your very kind introduction, Mr. Mayor Martin. I will share my screen. So can you see the slides? Okay. Yeah. Can you switch from moderator? I mean, we see your screen, not the full presentation. Oh, so how about now? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, good morning from Germany. I'm Nanya Li from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. It's my great pleasure to participate in this Jet Career Technical Conference. And today I would like to talk about the rapid 3D microprinting of continuous carbon fiber reinforced thermoplastic composites. First, I will give a brief introduction of our Institute for Past Power and Microwave Technology. And we located in this uh, KIT Commerce Lord and uh, belongs to this uh, Helmholtz Association. Um, can you see my mouse? Yeah. And uh, we have five different buildings in this area. Then uh, our main topic uh, is, is this uh, two research area areas the material processing using micro technologies, such as for the micro curing of uh, continuous fiber reinforced polymer composites, thermoplastic composites and uh, ceramic matrix composites, also the centering of ceram ceramic materials. This figure shows on the left side shows the Hephaestus microwave curing oven. And here's two parts. One is the leading edge for the aircraft wing it's cured by using microwave and also this uh, CMC breaking disc. And the second uh, research area is a <clears throat> continuous wave, one megawatt, 100 feet and 40 gigahertz coaxial cavity giant trunk for the stellarator <clears throat> W7X. So this high power um, giant trunk is meant for the, to generate the uh, plasma and for fusion purpose. And my research uh, group main, uh, located in this uh, first um, material processing uh, groups. So here on um, how our, our idea for the printing of continuous carbon fiber reinforced plastics comes from. This uh, slides I will give a brief introduction of the, about the printing mechanism. So the CCFRP short for the continuous carbon fiber reinforced plastics. It's produced by you by mixing the carbon fiber and the polymer matrix inside the heating nozzle. So during the printing process, there's a traction force provided by the continuous fiber. So it's different from the traditional extrusion process. It's a combination of extrusion and the protrusion. If we can, uh, we can optimize this printing process, such as the uh, printing temperatures or the gap between the printing nozzle and the platform. So by adjust this, it could be possible to uh, adjust the compaction degree of the printed parts. So based on the current research, it is possible that for the printed parts to reach the nearly the same uh, Young's modules for the conventional uh, printing process for CFRTP parts. This slide shows the parts printed uh, um, since 2016. And this left one shows the layer by layer printing. Then uh, it's uh, printed by continuous fibers. And we, we, we use this conventional heating nozzle. And also this lattice structure is without any supporting materials because the outstanding mechanical strings provided by the continuous fibers, it could be uh, and support itself without any supporting materials. Then why we want to use a microwave technology for this uh, 3D printing process? 
because when we introduce the continuous carbon fiber into the uh, polymer matrix, it totally changed the printing principle like I introduced before. Then by using the conventional heating, so the heat transfer totally depends on the thermal conductivity of the materials. If we, heat, if we try to print or heat the filament inside the nozzle, the thermal heat always transferred from the outside to the inside. So for example, we have a, maybe a little bit larger filament, like one millimeter diameter, then the heat transfer from the outside to the inside will lead to a very big issue. That is the outside of the material already melted, reaching the melting point, but the core, the core of the filament is still unmelted. That's a big issue for the printing process. So by using the microwave technology, it provides the advantages of instantaneous, selective and uh, volumetric heating advantages, which allow us to heat the material from the inside to the outside simultaneously. Then by, by using this kind of uh, benefits, it shows the advantage of high speed printing. So because microwave has low contact to the material, in the material's point of view, it, it itself it is the heating source. Then we can achieve at least 10 times faster than the uh, uh, current uh, 3D printer for continuous fibers. And also achieve this uh, uniform heating of large scale filament. So and also like uh, for some high temperature materials like peak, 450 degrees melting temperature is also very easy for the microwave technology and uh, it can, can be very precise to tune the heating temperature. And so all the benefits provided by the microwave printing process. So based on this kind of concept, we developed the first microwave printing system for continuous carbon fiber reinforced uh, thermoplastics. We call it SERPENTS, and short for, uh, where is the mouse? Short for super efficient and uh, rapid printing by uh, electromagnetic heating necessitated uh, system. Yeah. That's our, our printer. So uh, it's the first uh, generation of this uh, 3D microprinting system, but inside this um, microwave uh, printing kit, it's already our fourth generation. And behind serpents, we have eight K technologies developed by solving lots of difficult challenges. The first one is this small size resonant cavity. And the second one is this large and multi diameter filaments, which we can produce with uh, different fiber volume fraction. Also the filament impregnation system to continuously produce the filament. And also the low dependent pass planning for continuous fiber, prediction model based temperature control and printing process monitoring. These two functions combined together to become our control system. And the market physics simulation for microwave printing process, solid state amplifier. And this slide shows how the printing process happened inside the microwave cavity. So different from the conventional printing, what I mentioned before, this microwave printing cavity will use the prepared CCFRP filament. So the filament goes inside the cavity from the input port, then hit it uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the cavity and which near the output port by using the micro energy. Yeah. And it can be printed with, without any supporting materials because we can precisely tune the temperature and use very large filament for the printing process. Then here we show the research result about the field distribution inside the microwave resonant cavity. The left uh, figure, the first one is the electric field. So the microwave has been coupled inside from the microwave port using a T connector. Then the filament goes through it and hit it near the output. Also in the middle of the figure, we see this magnetic field. And we placed the six different points along the filament, which measure the three different kinds of field distribution. And on the right figure, it shows this uh, measurement result. Um, 
the the filament temperature dis distribution it has the it's decided by the mag magnetic field instead of this electric field because we use the carbon fiber uh, uh, in this filament so it's it is can some kind of conductive materials then we put this conductive material in the electric magnetic field it will induce a very strong eddy current on the skin dips for each carbon fiber then this uh, eddy current will transfer the micro energy to the thermal heat. And then the thermal heat generated from the carbon fibers transfer to the uh, polymer matrix. The polymer matrix, such as the thermoplastic, PLA, and the linon, it also can absorb microwave energy. So it's some kind of combined heating. It's heat transfer from the carbon fiber in a very quick and efficient way and also the microwave direct heating to the matrix itself. Then um, by, by controlling this uh, printing temperature, we need to understand that the printing temperature has a very strong relation to the microwave power and printing speed. So if we change the printing speed and maintain the microwave power unchanged, the temperature will have a very big difference. Then, uh, so here we showed the power speed relationship. By increasing the printing speed from uh, static, which is zero, to 100 millimeter per second, uh, the microwave power increased from uh, line watt to 65 watt to maintain the filament temperature around 250 degrees. Uh, here also showed this. Uh, uh, infrared image captured from for the uh, filament inside the cavity. By using this power speed relationship, we develop this prediction model based controller. We use this uh, predi prediction model based controller to adjust the microwave power during printing process. If we change the printing speed, such as we go very high speed in the straight lines and reduce the speed when it's go to the corner or turn or, or sharp edge. Then we change the microwave power to adapt to the micro printing, printing temperature. Then if there's some uh, uh, disturbance, such as the material itself, we can use this deep PID to, to compensate this temperature difference. Yeah, if you're interested in this, uh, control uh, uh, algorithm, you also can find more detailed information on uh, our published uh, papers. So um, after we have this uh, micro printing system and also the temperature control system, we can try to uh, do this uh, printing path planning for continuous fiber. And uh, here shows this and our study case. We used airship solid part which has a support on the top barrier and a load uh, vertical to the ground. And first we need to understand that the continuous fiber is a uh, very isotropic and strong material. So it's always good to path the continuous fiber along the load transmission path. That means to use the material where it is needed. Then first we do the topological optimization to determine which area is needed for this kind of uh, material. So after the tropological optimization, this uh, green area shows, we know that all of these areas, it's mainly composed by the tensile and the compressive stresses. That's where we want to print the continuous fiber. After then, we use the low dependent printing mass uh, algorithm to, to generate the printing pass. So the red lines are the printing paths and this uh, blue uh, lines around them are the collection between them. After the printing process, we can cut it. Yeah. So the, the main purpose is to reinforce this part or directly print them layer by layer for this uh, optimized shape. So this, this idea is quite uh, um, similar to what the nature laws, like for the trees or for the uh, uh, carapace of the insect, it's always used, or our bones, it always use the material where it's leading. So uh, we do so by using this um, process to produce the bionics, 
the CCFRP structures. First, do the topological optimization, and after that, we have the uh, uh, blue and the green lines, which um, is the tensor and the compressive squeezes. And there are lots of vectors inside this uh, shape, so we can know what is this uh, stresses flow. Then we print this uh, shape by using the continuous fiber. So it can, the fibers um, mechanical properties can be used as, as, as best as possible. Mm, that's how we call it, uh, bionic structures. So it's determined by the stresses flow, which uh, under a certain load and support conditions then achieve the best uh, strength to weight ratio and uh, this light weight by using this light weight structure. Here we did some uh, investigation about the strength to weight ratio. And the part, uh, this ionic part uh, printed by uh, carbon fiber, this, uh, this one, it has a weight of about 7.6 grams, thickness about 1.2 millimeter. Then the, uh, this plastic part, it has about 6.7 millimeter thickness and 38 grams. Then by doing this uh, tensile test, we can see the hammer very different stiffness. So uh, with the reinforced uh, uh, reinforcement of uh, continuous carbon fiber, the strength to weight ratio has been increased for about 16 times higher. And also, um, like, like I said, microwave can increase the printing speed. Then we compared with this um, traditional printing process of continuous fiber, it's both PA and PRA and ABS, to see what the difference of the tensile strings. So we used this 10 millimeter per second to 15 millimeter per second printing speed to see uh, the difference of uh, microwave printing and uh, conventional printing for CCFRP. So the microwave printed parts, it has higher strength than conventional, conventional uh, which you need to use less than five millimeter or seven millimeters uh, printing speed. And the production time has been reduced uh, tremendously. Under this uh, 50 millimeter per second speed, the tensile strength increased about 61% compared to the uh, 7 millimeter per second uh, conventional printing. So we did this uh, micro, uh, microscope investigation, optical microscope, to see the difference of the printed samples. For the conventional printing, like I said, because the heat transfer happened from outside to the inside, the best way is to reduce the printing speed as slower as possible, so you can have a uniform heating to the core. For the five millimeter per second printing speed, it's still not enough. We can see from the cross-section view of the uh, tensor testing samples, the white, the white part, the white part are the common fibers, and black one are the matrix. So the common fibers is printed layer by layer. Uh, we can see different layers here. And between the fibers and between the filaments, there are lots of voids. So like the, this uh, white arrow shows here, there are lots of these triangle voids. It's very common uh, defects for the FDM printing process because the filament has not been totally melted for, for the core. So it cannot um, attach to the, or are higher to the adjacent filament very well. There's always this triangle defects between them. But for the microwave printing, because we have this uniform heating from outside to the inside, the inside area also melted to uh, also reach the melting temperature, even at a very high printing speed. So this uh, common fibers layer has been pressed like a strip. And they don't have, we don't see very obvious defects between the filaments. That means they, were, they have a really good bonding uh, strings between each other. That's the reason why we can improve the mechanical strings by using micro printing process. Okay, so um, with all of uh, our efforts to this uh, technology, we've been granted this uh, PIT Neunland Innovation, Technology, uh, Innovation Awards in 2020. And we got this first prize. So the idea is uh, 
KIT gave us this award and will keep uh, will help us to make the technology commercialized and put it to the market. Now we already start the second round for the uh, marketing survey and to see this uh, potential collaborators from different fields. Uh, so and the purpose will, will be to make this uh, technology available from the market. And to the outlook, um, so we have a strong confidence that in future, this kind of technology <clears throat> will be widely used to print, to fabricate this lightweight, super lightweight and strong materials and composite structures for the future aircraft, such as by using the lattice truss core to replace the sandwich honeycombs and this bionic uh, parts to replace the metal aluminum Italian parts to provide exactly the, the, the mechanical performance which where the, the part is needed and to, to print the material where it's needed. Yeah, so totally uh, I, uh, we hope that uh, could be come true in the near future. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much. That's my presentation. And if you uh, want to contact us about this uh, cooperation purpose, you can contact our innovation and the relation management, uh, Dr. Heiner Kerber or me for more detailed information. And also we will bring this uh, 3D micro printer to the Jaguar 2022. So uh, if you are interested, you can uh, also go to Paris and have a look of our technology and the printer. So then hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any question or comment for the presentation? Yes, there is a question from the audience. Microphone is over there. Hey, Nanja, good to see you here from Korea. That's Frank Henning speaking. Um, uh, listening to your talk again, um, uh, different subject, but that question came to my mind when I was uh, listening to your 10 times faster heating by using microwave. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I think the majority of the heating is uh, coming through the conductivity of the uh, carbon fibers themselves, so I think there must be a relationship to the carbon fiber content of the, of the rowing, right? When you refer yes, 10, you times, right. uh, 10 times faster, what uh, fiber volume content are you uh, uh, addressing? Yeah, so um, uh, for this testing, uh, we use this 50% 50, 50 fiber volume fraction for the 0.45 millimeter diameter filaments. So it can reach 250 in less than two seconds. And we use only a line watt type of power. And if we want to use some uh, low volume metric or large diameter filaments, it's also possible because you only need to increase the micro power, like from 9 watt to 12 watt for the 27% 27, uh, 27 fiber volume fractions of uh, filaments. Yeah. And like you said, all of these um, heating uh, benefits is, has a very strong relationship to the material properties, like the permittivity. Mm -hmm. It depends on how much microwave power can be absorbed by the materials. Mm -hmm. yeah. So have you made an investigation on fiber content and heating speed as well? Is there uh, uh, some investigation yes. being made? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, for currently that uh, this pr produced filaments, they always have the fiber concentrated in the core. So our idea is to separate them in, uh, uniformly, homogeneously in the whole filaments. It's a quite challenging task. And then by doing so, it also uh, benefit to uh, give a very high penetration dips to the microwave. Yeah. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. I also want to add just one, one, one comment to your outlook. I really would like to mm -hmm. see um, um, also your kind of printing skeleton for one of our oval molding projects because I think that could be an additional market to what you have shown today. So we, yes, we, need, yes. we, we need to follow up soon about that. Thank you very okay. much for your presentation. Yes. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you very much. Is there any other comment or question? If not, let's move on. Please give him a big round of applause. 박수 좀 부탁드리겠습니다.